and both you and I should be too shy about letting go for what Come and be free with me Hey everyone! Hey, welcome! We are going to take you today along with us to see Bear Country USA. It's a drive-through game park located about halfway between Rapid City and Hill City, South Dakota. And um, no lions or tigers, just bears. Just bears. Oh my! <laughs> now they've got they got elk in there, and um, they right. got a wolf if you can find it. Reindeer. Yeah, reindeer. Bighorn sheep. So some neat animals. It's a, a, a drive-through game park. So instead of taking Grace, um, our work camping job, we we're lucky enough to have the use of a van. And that's what we're going to take to go drive through and see the animals. enjoy the ride and the bears they're really cool yeah they are um, lots of them don't be surprised when the meat wagon comes around come lunchtime and bears just come out of everywhere everywhere so we were just driving along and saw a couple bears one of them was playing in the water and all of a sudden we see this bear running and we're thinking where is he going you know and and then we see another bear running, and, and then we see more bears running, and, and then we saw a truck, and we realized, that's the food truck coming around. <laughs> mm -hmm. They had all kinds of raw meat, bread, you know, just scraps that they've probably been donated to but them. Vegetables, you saw some of them eating carrots, and yep. big chunks of meat. But it was so cool to be there right at the time that that food wagon came through and to see them just I literally like surrounded our car literally everywhere right up alongside of it too right in front of you you know it was pretty cool
boo boo. We found a bigger picnic basket. Oh, that one's fighting. We were there about noon-ish? Yeah, noon, probably. For those of you who want to know what, what time the food wagon rolled through, um, I want to say it was right around noon that we went. So our, you know, our timing was just, it was just perfect. Just by sheer coincidence. Yep. And then after you get done driving through the large animal segment of the park, they have another area dedicated just to smaller animals and baby bears. And you can park your car and get out and walk through all of those exhibits. And, and those are neat. We had uh, something funny with the baby bears. If you got any common sense, or you are a mother, uh, we were walking up to the baby bears. Now they're down into, you're overlooking them, so you got a fence between you and you're down, looking down in, like a zoo area, you know, how you can look down and absor observe them. But, and they beg. They beg for food because for five dollars you can buy a little a little cup of food and feed the baby bears. So they sit up on their little haunches and they beg for food with their paws. Mm -hmm. And as we were walking up on them, there was uh, a family behind us and the mother, I'm assuming she was the mother, she goes, oh, look at over here. These are little bears. I wonder why they're so small. Like I said, if you're anything of a mother, you would know that they were cubs. They weren't, how can I be politically correct? Short bears, midget bears, little people bears. <laughs> no, they were just- Pygmy bears. <laughs> pygmy bears, whatever you want to call them. They were just baby bears, little boo-boos. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that came out my mouth was because it hurts to push one of those out full size. <laughs> This is one of our freebies that we get by um, camp hosting up there. Um, they have the VIP program for seasonal workers and it's so you can go out and promote these different attractions. And it's been really a great thing to have because we've saved probably a couple hundred dollars maybe? Yeah. On all the different attractions we've gotten into for free. Um, if you go back and watch some of our other South Dakota videos, Crazy Horse was free. That saved us $28. And the 1880s train ride, I think that was $30 a person. We did that for free. And um, this is free. And so uh, kind of a neat thing if you're working up in that area. They give you a list, big, a lot, a lot of things you can do for free. Yeah. Um, do expect, when you go in, do expect to um, wait in line of your vehicle a lot of people they will stop and you know it's like the first time they've ever seen anything like that and take pictures and you'll see all kinds of vehicles there were people that were towing trailers rvs mm -hmm. driving their rvs right through right through the park um, so it's big enough to swing a rig around in there so if you you don't have to stop somewhere and unhook if you don't want to i'd say a good 30 foot trailer was a couple cars in front of us wheeling around. So we had a really great time at the bear exhibit. Um, recommend it to anyone who, who really loves animals and, and is in the area. It's, it's worth a trip over there. Um, and then we get back to the campground and where we parked the van that we were using while we were work camping it was kind of set, kind of down below was, and off to the side of our trailer. It was in the overflow parking, but we were up, up a little, you know, this is the van, here's the 
trailer, if you can see me, van, trailer. So we get back and he always, always backs in so that when it's time to go to work, he's ready to just drive out and go to work. And uh, so we pull in, he backs the van in and looks at me and says, when did we get that hole in the side of our trailer? And I said, oh, yay big. What hole? 50 cent piece. Yep. So here's the piece they broke. You can see there's two shutoffs for the water. That one, and then they completely broke this one. And it's right behind the camper. And then right here next to the hose is one piece. There's another piece. And then this one must have gone right underneath the slide and it landed right there, right behind our rear tires and rear jack. And you can see that piece is threaded. I'm not going to pick it up right now because I want our manager to come out and look at it where it is. But then looking up on our skirting, and I don't know how well this is going to come out, but you can actually see the thread marks in it where it hit and ricocheted off of there and put a hole in our slide wall right there. And uh, on the other side of that is our pantry for the kitchen. So now I'll back out to give you some perspective. Of where it is. Turns out the lawn mowing crew had just been through. And uh, we walked up and looked at it and had two pieces of J skirting that had damage to them where a piece of metal had ricocheted off of them, punched a hole right through the side wall of our kitchen slide. Now, me, being the hillbilly country boy, I am, it's not too hard to figure out what happened. Put two and two together and you can see where the lawnmower crested a little bit of a hill and there was a water valve where they shut it off in the winter, sticking up probably about two or three inches out of the ground. Now when he crested up over there, you can see where the blades went into the dirt and him chopping that off. And he broke the pipe off about, they had to dig, what, a good foot down mm -hmm. into the ground to get to where he broke the pipe off in the ground as he ran it over. And the metal collar at the top was thick metal. So, you know, it was a good, he clobbered that thing <laughs> to break it like he did. Yeah, he gave that yard a good haircut because it was down into dirt. So you know he hit it. When you hit stuff like that, if you've ever mowed a yard, you know you hit it. Yeah. And unfortunately, when we finally went and talked to them about it, the lawn mowing crew went, Ooh, we didn't, those things are loud. We didn't know we hit anything. How could you not, goober? <laughs> I'm not upset at the campground. I'm a little upset at the, uh, the mowing crew. You know for not fessing up yeah yeah so we were we we're lucky in that the um the manager of the campground that we were working for um submitted it to her insurance company and so they're gonna they're gonna make it right they're gonna they're gonna get our camper fixed um it's gonna take a little bit of time but uh, the insurance company seems great. They're willing to work with us as far as us being able to get to a place to get it fixed um, or even to get to a place where we can get an estimate. Uh, unfortunately, being up in the Black Hills, the nearest recommended RV shop didn't have anybody there who was able to do an insurance estimate. So uh, we'll save that for when we get back into a more populated area. <laughs> that means we're going to have to be around people. <laughs> yeah, that means we're going to have to get social. Uh, and uh, and then we'll get the estimate done. And then after that gets approved, we'll schedule the repairs and get them done. And it may take a little bit, but it'll get taken care of. So thank you all for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed your trip through bear country. 
and uh, if you're curious about this whole camp hosting thing, join us next time because we're going to talk about our job specifically, what we did, and how we liked it. Thanks for coming along, guys. We'll see you next time. See ya. Bye.